Hey there everybody and welcome to the channel, I'm your host Rama, and in today's video I'll be breaking into the top 10 fastest supercars in Grand Theft Auto Online. Supercars as a whole are such a diverse category of vehicles, I mean you got cars like the Banshee 900R here and then the LM87 and these vehicles are so far apart on looks and handling it's honestly insane. So today's video is definitely going to be a fun one. Now one thing I do want to point out is that we are only going off of top speed and unfortunately because I do not play on a next generation console, I don't have access to the HSW vehicles, I play on a PC. Hopefully Rockstar will add them in the future, but for now, looks like I'm stuck with these vehicles. So I should point out that the three HSW cars are faster than all these vehicles in first, second, and third place. But with that aside, let's get into the number 10 slot, which is the Krieger. I think the Krieger is amazing. I think it's based off the, the uh, Mercedes 1. I might be wrong there, but let me know in the comments down below. What I can say is that the Krieger not only features an absolutely insane top speed at 127.25 miles per hour, but it also features a fantastic handling aspect as well. I mean, look at this. I can turn full speed and not lose grip whatsoever. There are not many cars you can say that for in the game, and because of that, the Krieger has some of the best lap time in the game within the top 10 as well. So, uh, yeah, the Krieger is the best of both worlds. The problem is it's very, very expensive at $2.87 million of a price tag. That means that this is the second most expensive car in the entire list, and probably one of the most expensive normal vehicles to buy on Legendary Motorsport just in the game. So uh, you're definitely gonna be paying for this kind of handling and performance. That's something you should definitely keep in mind. Do I think it's worth the price? Honestly, I wouldn't say it's not worth the price. I mean, if you really like the look of the Krieger, and you want a car that's really good on handling and it'll get you from point A to point B in a fast time, then, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, and if you only buy one supercar, then I definitely go for the best of the class, so, yeah, the Krieger is not a bad choice at all. Next up, we have the Emerus, which is also a direct competitor to the Krieger. Not only were both of these cars released at the same update, but as well, they feature the same top speed at 127.25 as well. The Emerus is very, very fast, as we just went over, and it also has very, very good handling, so, I mean, it's just... Both of these cars are amazing. Now, I will point out that the Emirates actually can lose grip, as you can see. So that is one thing that you should keep in mind about the Emirates, is while it has actually better lap time than the Krieger, if you are not as confident as a driver, then the Emirates can be a bit harder because it turns corners sharper. So if you are good at driving and you understand how to use the insane cornering the Emirates has, then it's great. But if you don't, then it's actually going to be worse for you, and I'd say to go for the Krieger. Now, the Emirates is a bit cheaper at $2.75 million dollars but yeah it's still not much cheaper is it it's really not i think the emerus looks a bit nicer though because it's based off the mclaren senna which is one of my favorite all-time f1 drivers and uh well it's a shame he passed away but yeah very very cool car and i would definitely say that this is a vehicle i would suggest to buy over the krieger just because it has that handling advantage but that's my personal opinion into the number eight slot, we have the Xeno. This is a car that I originally did not like the look of, but after upgrading it, I actually think it looks really cool. First of all, I've got the little X-Wing on it uh, for a spoiler, and I think that looks awesome, especially with the secondary color accents on the back and the front. I just think those look absolutely fantastic. Add that in with the fact that the Xeno has now the newest high top speed of 127.5, and uh, yeah, I mean, the Xeno just looks amazing. I don't know if it's Xeno or Zeno. I think Xeno sounds better, but I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Either way, it's a really nice car, but once again, $2.82 million. I don't know why Rockstar makes all of these new supercars so dang expensive, but yeah, they are really expensive. One thing I should point out about the Xeno is that it does not have good handling compared to the uh, Emirates. I mean, look at this. Literally just a slight turn here and there, and you fishtail right into a wall. So that is something you have to keep in mind is that it has decent handling, but only if you apply the brakes where the Emirates and as well the Krieger are just going to absolutely smoke it in handling, especially when they only go 0.25 miles per hour slower. So uh, yeah, I'd really only buy the Xeno if you like the look of it. Apart from that, it's definitely not a car I would suggest to go for and that's also the same for the x80 proto there's a bug with the x80 proto when you turn i'm not sure which direction to the right or to the left but when you turn it'll spin out one side always and the other side it won't 
so because of that, it creates actually a very bad dynamic for handling and racing. But the X80 still does have a very impressive top speed of 127.5 miles per hour. For how old this car is, that's actually very, very, very impressive if you were to ask me. And yeah, this is it. So you can see if I turn towards my right, it doesn't spin out. It just kind of turns towards the right, and then obviously we drive into a wall. But if I go back up to speed and I... Uh, I turn to my left, let me just get a bit of speed here, and uh, yeah, let's just do this, and I turn to my left, you're going to see it just kind of spins out, so that that's one of the problems with the uh, X80 Proto, is that there's a bit of a bug with the car, but it's pretty fast, and as I said, for a car that is this old, it's pretty impressive. I also love the way you can see the actual back spoiler moves back and forth when you turn the car. Add that in with the fact that uh, the car is just such a weird, wonky looking vehicle, Definitely a, a one that I, I've always wanted to get when it first came out. The problem is, once again, it's $2.7 million, making it a very, very expensive vehicle. So, I wouldn't suggest to buy the X80. I mean, yes, it looks very cool, and if you like the look of it, then go for it. But the problem is, its handling is just not great for what it is. And when you add that in with the fact that it's so expensive, and you can get these two vehicles here for the same price, I just wouldn't go for it. Into our next slot, we have the Entity XXR. Now, I actually really, really like the Entity XXR. First of all, it's fast, 128 miles per hour, finally breaking that barrier. But as well, the thing about the Entity is it looks like a sleeper vehicle. I've made mine this color, which is kind of like a, a graphite gray, I would say, or graphite black. And uh, because of that, it just kind of looks like a car you wouldn't expect to be in the top 10 fastest. It looks like a fast car, but just nothing that would beat you in a strip. And it does. And because of that, I really like the Entity. Not only does it have really good top speed, but it also has, as you can see, really good handling. Doesn't lose grip at all when turning, well, unless you hit a, a dirt patch. But for the most part, it's got really good handling. It's got really good top speed and acceleration. I mean, obviously, it's based off a of Kona Sig. But I love the look of this car, and I think that this is definitely one of my favorite vehicles when it comes to the top 10 fastest. I should also point out that it is finally a little bit cheaper at 2.3 million dollars. Not a lot cheaper, but 2.3 million dollars is definitely a lot less than the other vehicles in this allotment. Unfortunately, oh no, I just got absolutely T-boned by that car. But uh, what I was going to say is, unfortunately, the vehicle in the next slot makes this thing look incredibly cheap, which is the LM87. Now, here's what I'll say about the LM87. There's a reason why it is so expensive. First of all, it's super duper fast. The LM87 having a top speed of 128.5 miles per hour. And that's great. I mean, it puts us into fifth place. The other thing about the LM87 is that it by far has the best handling out of all the supercars in the game. And I'm willing to say that. I mean, I would say the RE7B might have better handling, but the problem is the RE7B only goes about a buck 24, which is so much slower than this car that it, it's not even close uh, when it comes to the handling comparison. I mean, just look at this thing. I can full speed turn back and forth and there's, well, apart from me being bad at driving there for a second, there's no problem with handling. I mean, you can very easily weave in and out of traffic with no problem whatsoever. When you add that in with the fact that, again, this thing has an amazing top speed, I definitely think that this is a must-buy vehicle, first of all, if you want to win any races, but second of all, if you just like supercars, this is a vehicle I would definitely suggest to go for. It is just flat amazing, and I also love the look of it. The only thing Rockstar screwed up is the fact that, for some reason, they made it so the bumper goes into the ground. It actually really irritates me. I don't know why they didn't just raise the car by about an inch, but uh, yeah, kind of a bit of an irritance when it comes to the uh, overall look and stature of this vehicle. Would I suggest to buy it for $2.9 million? Maybe. I mean, as I said before, when it comes to the Emirates and the Krieger, I'd really only go for a super expensive supercar if you really just want to have one expensive vehicle to do the job. And if you're going off that, I would definitely suggest the LM87, especially since the Emirates and Krieger are only about 200000 cheaper. So, uh, yeah, at that point, I'd just go for the LM87. Next up, we have the complete opposite of handling when it comes to the vehicles we've talked about, which is the Banshee. 900R. This vehicle has a top speed of 131. Yeah, that's right. We just went from 128 to 131. The Banshee 900R doesn't look like it would go 130, but it does. It's very, very fast. First of all, I think it looks great. The problem is the handling is just so bad. I mean, look at this. It's just spin out heaven. But, I mean, what do you expect? It's literally a Viper with like a V1000 engine in it. So, uh, 
I expect it to have absolutely no handling. The Banshee 900R is the kind of car you're going to pull out if you want to win a drag race. You're not going to pull it out if you want to do anything else, uh, because it's not going to do anything else. I mean, I guess if you're driving down the highway, it'll be a really good vehicle, but apart from that, I just wouldn't suggest to buy the Banshee 900R. However, there is one very nice thing about the Banshee, and that is it's quite cheap. It's $565,000 to get the upgrade, and the Banshee itself is like $100,000, so it's $600,000 to buy this car. Now, sure, it's a Benny's vehicle, which means upgrades are going to be expensive, maybe another $400,000 instead of $200,000 on upgrading the vehicle. But even then, I mean, it's not that expensive. It's a third of the price of a vehicle like the LM87. And the fact that it's so cheap and you're able to get that insane top speed, I definitely say that the Banshee 900R is a, is a pretty good buy for the money that it costs, especially for how fast it does go. I wouldn't suggest to buy it for one reason, and that is our number one slot. But I'm not going to talk about that just yet, because now we move on to the Torero XO which is uh, actually one of my favorite cars in the game. The fact that this car looks so amazing is just, it's just so nice looking. I mean, the Torero, first of all, has a top speed of 131 miles per hour, right up there with the Banshee. And the thing is, is that this car actually has decent handling. Oh God, I didn't mean to go down here. But the thing is, as we talked about, the Banshee has no handling. Like turning these corners here in the Banshee would be almost impossible. But with the Torero, you can actually turn these corners. And the fact that this car looks just so amazing. First of all, these headlights, oh my God, I love how they, uh, the pop up and down headlights, the way they work. It's just, I think they look amazing. This is obviously based off the new Lamborghini Countach, which is also an amazing car. And it looks so similar. I just think that this car looks amazing. And uh, with the fact that it has handling, the fact that it has top speed and acceleration, it's just a great car. The problem is that once again, it is very, very expensive, sitting at $2.89 million. It seems like all the great cars in this list are just so dang expensive. I mean, I can't blame Rockstar because these cars are absolutely amazing when it comes to handling looks and performance, but it's just such a shame that they are so expensive. I mean, the list of cars here, apart from like the Banshee, which is over there, is like, what, like $10 million? Just five cars is like $10 million we've been over, which is kind of insane when you think about it. So, uh, yeah, definitely a bit of a shame. The final two vehicles are actually some of the cheapest in the list. First thing we have is the Devastate. This is 131.75 miles per hour. And uh, it's actually $1.8 million, which is a million dollars cheaper than the previous car we talked about. And I should also point out that the Devastate is in the top 10 handling list. It's actually, I mean, you can see here, it's got really good handling. So uh, in that barometer, I would say it's, it's absolutely useless to buy a vehicle like the Torero XO if you're going for handling. When this vehicle exists, and not only does it have really good handling compared to it, but as well a really good top speed. The problem I have with it is that I think this car is hideous. I know that there are people out there that like the look of this car. I just think that this is probably one of the ugliest cars that Grand Theft Auto has ever released. So, uh, yeah, let me know in the comments what you think about this car. I do not like the look of it. I think that it's, uh, it looks like, I don't even know what it looks like. There's just two giant holes sticking out of the back of it. It's, uh, yeah, just, yeah, that, that's what I think of it. But for the price tag, if I was a newer player in the game, I would definitely uh, submit to my ugliness and still buy the car just because I think it is such a great vehicle on handling and as well acceleration and top speed the final vehicle we have is the fister 811 now the fister 811 looks amazing i think that this is honestly the nicest looking car car yes car of all the ones we've just talked about the fister is based off the porsche 918 spider i think and uh it's just first of all it looks amazing and it has the fastest top speed at 132.5 miles per hour, which is incredibly fast. And by the way, its handling isn't actually that bad. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not good. You can see here, it'll spin out. But for how fast it is and the acceleration it carries, it's actually not too bad on the handling. So I really like the Fister. I think that it's an amazing vehicle. And I would definitely suggest to buy this, especially because it's only $1.1 million. This is probably the cheapest car in the whole list, apart from the Banshee, I would say. Uh, and the Banshee's pretty close, I would say, because of the Benny's upgrades cost. So yeah, I personally believe that the Fister is just one of the best cars to buy, especially if you're a newer player and you want to get from point A to point B. Just such an amazing car, the Fister and the Banshee. And uh, yeah, hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Obviously, if you'd like to see more like it, please consider smashing that subscribe button down below. Uh, if you want me to go over fastest compacts and other weird categories that I haven't gone over yet, let me know. But other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.